start today by saying that we're here talking about the government's response to the arbitration panel who has been working through the secondary school teachers' negotiations process. Firstly, I want to thank the arbitration panel for their work. And after careful consideration and weighing up the current challenging financial environment, the government has agreed to find the money through savings from other parts of the education budget and education budget's 2024 cost pressure allowance. I'm proud that we're continuing our track record of supporting teachers who are the cornerstone of our education system. This is an historic offer and we'll see beginning teachers receive an annual increase of almost $11,000 through this offer in addition to the $7,210 lump sum payment. The offer provides an increase of 35% for teachers at the top of the pay scale since we've been in government, compared to a 10% increase under the last national government. We are absolutely committed to investing in our teachers to attract and retain the best, to teach our young people to set them up to succeed and have a life full of choices. I know how disruptive the last few months have been for our students and young people. I know we all want our young people back in the classroom learning, and our offer shows our commitment to that. We are proud of this offer, and I hope that PPTA members are as well. And I'm happy to take questions. You said that you're going to pay for this through savings and other parts of the, other, of the education budget. How much are you going to be funding through savings and other parts of the education budget? So the government only has a certain amount of money to work with, so the funding does have to make, meet the recommendations coming from the education budget. We are... Um, the main savings of $374 million have been found from within that budget. They are savings from the Ministry of Education's departmental funding, forecast staffing underspend, mostly as a result of newer teachers being employed. We're removing the option or to bank staffing for all schools, including, uh, sorry, excluding Kaupapa Māori and Māori medium education, and that will start from July 2025. And we're deferring the Te Ao Marama and Hobsonville Point projects in the public-private partnership schools and expansion programme and rephasing the current operating funding. Can you go into detail about what departmental underspend is and how much that is? Uh, the departmental underspend, I haven't got those figures right in front of me right at this point in time, but all of that does does add up to $374 million. Uh, what it is, is that there will be some projects within the ministry that they will have to cut back on, but that will come from within their departmental funding. And this is a massive chunk of change. Are you confident that the government's funding all adds up here, you're going to have the money and teachers won't be disappointed? Yes, we are confident, but what I can say is that we've given this very, very careful consideration since the arbitration panel's uh, report came out. We've been working through this so that any uh, reprioritisation and changing around in the funding is going to have as least impact on young people's learning as we possibly can. So we have been through this in many, many ways. Uh, we've looked at very, very many different options, but what I can say is that this is the options that we have, the options we have landed on here will have the least impact. Does this include Kura, Kura Māori, and is there... Uh, consideration for additional loading for uh, kaiako Māori in respect to things like kapahaka, tikanga, kōwhiri, additional loading as well. So if you have a look at the uh, arbitration panel's recommendations, that has been included in those recommendations. Uh, those are things that uh, members members have been telling us for quite some time. If you look at the primary school teachers settlement, it has that uh, tikanga allowance in there. Again, once again, it is acknowledging that there are teachers who do have a different loading on their expectations around aspects such as taking kapahaka uh, or um, karanga or whaikorero. Those are all elements that are really, really important within our schooling system. But I just remind that when we're talking about the savings that we're making, uh, the, we talked about the removal of the option to bank staffing for all schools. We're excluding kora, uh, kaupapa Māori and Māori medium education from that. Now, what that means is that um, 
we have a shortage of real teachers and there are different ways that they use their funding within that and we want to encourage them to be able to continue to provide outstanding real Māori programs within their kura. How, are you that this, how confident are you that this will be accepted? Um, I'm really hopeful. I, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm very proud of this offer. I'm very, very hopeful. The uh, the executive of the PPTA have expressed their support to the arbitration panel's recommendations. I'm hopeful that the PPTA members will too. But the ball's in their court now. Um, obviously. Uh, it says 14.5 increase in base salaries by December next year, um, plus the, the standalone payment. And if, it's, if this is all accepted, when can secondary teachers expect to get that payment, and when can they expect to actually put the base salary to go up with that 14.5%? Right, so um, the base salary will start to go up in the incrementals as set out within the terms of settlement of the collective agreement uh, and we will be working to get that through as quickly as possible. I don't have the date in front of me of when that will be but if we can have the example of what happened with the primary school negotiations, that, that happened within the six weeks, around about that six weeks time for the money, to teachers to start seeing that money coming into their, their bank accounts and so we'll be working to a similar time frame. It will depend on the capacity of payroll to be able to deliver on that, but we will ensure that we're trying to get that through as quickly as we possibly can. So to sort of get it mostly sorted yes. in the next six months. Yes. Is that sort of yeah, thing? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I could say pretty confidently that it'll be well within that time frame too. Oh, to me, the other how thing I'll just take this one here. Yeah. Minister, to me, how difficult has this negotiation process been for the government given the tough financial conditions we're dealing with? Look, it has been very difficult, but we have gone into all of these negotiations with good faith. Uh, there's some recommendations about ways forward in the panel's report, and we're looking forward once we get this settled with the secondary school teachers of working through those recommendations around how we can look at a different way uh, that we're not having so much pressure put on the system in the future. The unions have said that they agree with this too. This is a conversation that we've had even prior to the, the panel's reports. Uh, just will reiterate, though, that it has not been easy. We know that this is a fiscally diff difficult time and this has not been an easy process to go through. But at all times, we have put our teachers there wanting the best for them, and that's why I reiterate what I started with. I thank the arbitration panel for also putting our teachers at the front of this and giving us a way forward as well. How far do you think this will go in terms of addressing the reported secondary teacher shortage? Well, I certainly think that our teachers have told us that uh, paying conditions are a big part of what is keeping people away from the sector. So we're addressing that through this offer. Uh, I, I'm very hopeful that that will go a long way towards addressing that. But we know it's not the only issues here. We know that there are other things that we need to be working through. Again, the arbitration panel has given some some nods towards that within the report and different ways that we might be able to work in future. Uh, they are discussions that I will continue to have. In fact, this week I'm meeting with uh, the Secondary School Principals Association just to talk about what some of those next steps could be too and how we do work together. Minister Tineri, Minister Tineri, will there be knock-on effects for primary school teacher pay and ECE teacher pay given the pay parity rules if this offer is accepted? Yes, so the unified base scale does have a parity clause in it from secondary through to primary and then primary through to kindergarten. And so yes, there will be those if, um, knock on impacts that come through. I have spoken to both unions just in the last half hour to give them a heads up that this is what the government is offering. Uh, the reason I spoke to both unions is it does have that impact on the NZDI Te Reo members as well. Is that sort of funding for potentially those rectifications, is that part of this package or will that have to come in? That has all been figured into this package. Um, just up the back there, I'm just, sorry I cut you off before. That's, no, that's okay. Um, so obviously 14.5%, it's twice the rate of inflation. Uh, were, there any dis were, were, were there any discussions about any effect that this uh, pay deal uh, could have uh, on inflation when, when the government was going through it? All of that is taken into account when we work through this and the discussions that we've had over the last week does take that into account. But at the end of this, what do you mean, what do you mean takes, into takes it into account and have 
think about whether that is going to have a an impact further down the line on the inflation grant. Uh, Robertson did say to me that for the really in-depth answers to that, please ask him for the, the really uh, impact of what we've had discussed around this. But having said that, at the end of it, uh, what we decided was that our teachers are really incredibly and critically important because they have such a positive impact on our young people. When we know that we've got a strong workforce, we know that we've got the best people in front of our young people. That was what we made our decision on to go with this recommendation. And so that has outweighed everything that uh, else that we have weighed up here. And that is why I've had to think very, very carefully about the education budget to think about how we can find the money to make this settlement work. Sorry, just in the front. Um, you, um, you've got here the, the uh, percentage increases since 2017 and for the top rate, 36%, and the beginning teacher, 23.5%. Why, why is there such a difference between the you know, proportional increases? For it's really what the unions have negotiated on. So um, it's weird that they've put their energies into, and I I actually looked at this myself, and uh, you know, be asking questions further down the line for future negotiations as well, because we do know to encourage people into teaching, we want to have a, a good salary. I think we're hitting that with this, but we also need to be mindful that we're keeping a relativity there as well. Are you concerned, I guess, at that, that? I mean, the fact that that, the, the, I mean, are you concerned about the, the I guess, the pay rate for te um, beginning teachers? Uh, coming into the profession? Not today. This is a good offer, and I think that, uh, well, I know from someone that's I was trying to remember my own starting salary, which was $19,000, uh, that what we've got here today is pretty pretty good in comparison to what we had in 2017. So I'm not concerned today, but those are for future conversations to have, particularly with the unions as well. You, you, you also note here, um, obviously, you know, that 36% increase under Labor, a 10% increase in Nationals' time in government. Why is, why is there such a disparity between those two? Well, <laughs> I was I was on the negotiation teams in those last ten years. I was the head of the primary principals negotiation teams. It was tough. We weren't being listened to, and that's why I'm proud of this offer, because while it's been a protracted negotiations, we have listened to our teachers, and we have really stood strongly for the fact that our teachers are incredibly important in uh, turning things around for our young people and giving them the best opportunities in life. So I cannot state strongly enough the difference that a teacher makes in a young person's life, and we're recognising that here today. Will you be continuing kōrero with Kaiako Māori considering that they are in a unique position, that there are additional uh, areas that they need to be recognised for and that a continuation of discussions around loading needs to continue. So will you be progressing those discussions, Kōrero, post-election? We're always very, very keen to continue those discussions. We know exactly the importance of the job that they do and uh, particularly in in really strengthening our tamariki, our rangatahi Māori, uh, young people, it is... We, we have to get that right for them because we do know that there is a shortage there. So, so getting the numbers is really important to enable that good work that can, to continue that happens within that medium of education. Okay. Mr. Timothy, a couple of quick questions. Were there other recommendations around the trial of cultural advisors and the $5,000 lump sum payments also accepted by the government? Yes. Yes. When it comes to that impact in those areas where there is big growth of students, Hamilton and the other example, are you concerned about that and do you have a date for when this project has been deferred until? Uh, the Ministry officials, so those schools were being contacted directly by Ministry officials. It will be rephased. We haven't got the exact dates just yet, but we are concerned that uh, we've got areas where they are in high growth schools where they are in high growth areas uh, where the design phase I will say that they haven't stopped completely. The design phase is carrying on with those particular schools and conjunction we just don't have a start date for the construction as yet but we'll be working on that as quickly as we possibly can. Do you think teachers will see pay rises this high in the next decade? 
I would think that that will depend on inflation rates coming through. I think that this sends a good message that our teachers are really well valued. I hope that we do see that our teachers are taken very seriously with in-pay negotiations, but I think it also depends on other factors that sit outside of negotiations, such as inflation rates at this time what as well. If the, what happens if this pay offer isn't accepted and they go through the process that needs to happen and then teachers say no or the union say no, what happens then? It will have to come back, but I will say that this is... Arbitration is a pretty strong uh, method of industrial, part of our industrial negotiation landscape within this country. The government has put a stake in the sand today to say that we are taking this incredibly seriously. We are taking our teachers seriously. I know that the executive of PPTA are also taking this very seriously and have said that this arbitration report is a good report and a good offer. So I'm very hopeful that members will take that, uh, see it that way as well. I'm not going to take a hypothetical of what might happen, but other than to say that we have to come back to the table right. again. So you've drawn a line in the sand. Does that mean expect no more money for the government after this is your final offer? This is a really good offer today. This is a really, go this is a really, really good offer. This yeah, is our final. Yeah, this is our final offer. This is our final. We 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 had an offer that we thought was a really, really good offer in the last time round. Today we are saying that the arbitration panel has made a different recommendation. We are agreeing to that, and that's a really. It is a really, really good offer. I've got one more. Do you wish you had made this offer, I guess, earlier to have saved all the disruption on our school students? Look, we were in a different landscape uh, in that we went into this all with good faith and we were letting the industrial processes, all the bargaining processes work through. Uh, we've got to this offer today. I'm celebrating this offer. This is a good offer for our teachers. I'm... I'm excited for them and I'm excited at the valuing of teachers that this government is showing today. Look, thank you everyone.